following show is a paid program. How you doing today? We have Mr. Ralph Cooper on here with us. Sports radio personality, Texas Radio Hall of Fame 2020 recipient, and my friend. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey, hey Cam, it's a pleasure to be on your program, and I hope you're doing well. Thank you. We are doing great. So many people have been calling when I posted the flyer of you going to be on here after all of these years. I've seen you along the way, and my God, you deserve it. You really do. So how do we get started? So how do we get started? Well, you, you can start wherever you want to. I'm just, I'm open. <laughs> I, 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 feel, I, I, I feel blessed to be here. Start wherever you want to start, whatever kind of questions you want to ask. But first of all, I want to, I want to commend you on your program. Uh, being one who can remember uh, when this type of thing wasn't happening and blacks didn't have these type of opportunities, I just want to commend you and your staff, your team on the uh, job that you're doing and putting up with an old guy like me uh, who's <laughs> learning all of this technology at a fast pace. Absolutely. I learned a Absolutely. lot about you, Worthing about High School Worthing graduate. High school Shout graduate. out to Worthing High School. Right. Uh, we, we, we can never say enough shout in regards to Worthing High School. Uh, what Worthing High School gave me of us, we, we could never replay, repay the educators who tolerated us from our hard head. Absolutely. 1973 to start off. K-Y-O-K. Let's talk about that experience. Well, I, I really started out before then. I really started out at the Forward Times in 1969, believe it or not, and I really started on the radio around that same time, thanks to two people, Skipper D. Frazier, yeah. who invited me to come to KCH and uh, predict the uh, college and pro football games. I didn't know he was betting on the games until later on uh, when he gave a bonus for getting the teams right. And also, so Rick Roberts at KYOK, uh, they were the ones who were responsible for me starting on radio. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that. They are true trailblazers along the way. And just seeing all that you've done during that period of time, why radio? Well, I realized I started in the newspapers. I was writing articles for news, uh, for the Forward Times. Most people don't know that I even wrote for Muhammad Speaks. I wrote Sepia Magazine. I had articles in Jet Magazine. And then the Houston Post at that time, the Houston Chronicle, the Forward Times, the Informant, the Defender. And uh, then I realized, just like you all realize right now, you can see a change was coming. And, and I saw that I had five minutes. They started me off with five minutes twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And I realized in those five minutes, okay, if I had a minute and a half, two minutes worth of commercials, I had three minutes to get my point over. And if you made your point right quick uh, you gave them something to think about uh, you could uh, you could uh, go a long ways in this particular business and that's what I had to do absolutely, absolutely. what I love about you and what I love about your commentary when I see you or hear you along the way and I've been listening to you for a long period of time you're very uh, direct with it and very informative why so about blacks in sports because that's our topic today Right and, and and well, it comes from experience. If you bit, if you if you hang around and you work hard, you're going to have things to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to you're going to have interviews and situations in life where you can share with people because of your experiences. And again, uh, being one who's been around here for a moment, uh, being one who remembers the Astrodome with Muhammad Ali fighting in the Astrodome, the Grambling Texas Southern football games, the Houston Oilers and Earl Campbell scoring four touchdowns on a Monday night on, on a, in a Monday night game on national television, uh, and, and, a, and a host of a great high school football games back in the day. Uh, you have a, you have a few things to talk about. And again, I go back hard work, going to the events and. Uh, not really thinking about time. 
Absolutely. So in looking Absolutely. at that, a lot of people just that, think that she came on the radio, came but you radio, but by you, far did a lot, lot more than that. You went to the people. Well, not only that, when I first started and I couldn't read that well, what I would do, I lived in Sunnyside. I lived at 4170 Barberry Street, Scott Plaza Apartments, right there behind where I would sit. I would go by the radio stations, KYOK and K. CODs and get the pull of the news services. They had the UPI and AP. I would pull the Y services, put a whole bunch of newspapers, stuff, and then I would go get sports page out of the newspaper. I would get me a six pack, and I would sit outside of my apartment and I would read out loud. And many of my neighbors thought I was retarded. They thought I was crazy, and because uh, they didn't know, they didn't know what I was doing was preparing for radio. And right. then when they right. saw me on radio, many of them. We became great friends. Hey, man, we thought you were, thought you had lost it. <laughs> thought you had lost it, and we didn't realize that you were really practicing uh, what you were getting ready to do. So that's uh, and you know this was before I had speech. I, I took speech classes from certain individuals, but I uh, but I found out a lot of the stuff you could do on your own with hard work. Wow. wow. Just with that testimony with of what you just gave, so many people are in fear of speaking out loud and in public, and especially on radio or TV. So you just probably, I'm sure you've opened doors to others because they have that fear. They know they want to do something, but they don't think they have the ability. Right, and and, and, and you, you, you want to be an inspiration to other people, and you want them to know, even when I deal with the interns, I try to tell them that the more you read and the more you practice, the better you can become, and, and you want more informed People are listening to you for information that they don't have. If you're not coming, if you're coming to them with the information they already have, they're not really, they're not going to really be in tune with you. So you've got to come with a little bit more information, and you've got to be opinionated and not concerned that people are going to be on your side, or be against you because you made an opinion. So those are some of the things that uh, that play a part in this, in my opinion. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. 1984 KCOH to present. How so long? Well, um, one thing, I, I, I followed other people. It wasn't just, uh, I watched other people and how they worked. Uh, my mother blessed me by naming me Ralph Cooper. My mother nearly named me Gary Cooper after the great actor. And my mother nearly named me Jackie Cooper, who was a child star. But my mother went to a movie, a black movie, before I was born and saw Ralph Cooper, who did Harlem, who did the Apollo Theater for five decades. Every Wednesday night, the amateur show for five decades. So my thing was after I read on him, if he can work four or five decades and all I have to do is just enjoy what I do, enjoy sports, I could do this uh, maybe for five or six, seven decades. So uh, the name has been an inspiration also. <laughs> I mean, to, to know your other name, you have a famous black person. Not that I'm not knocking those other guys. They were not, uh, they were famous. But he named after a great black person in black movies and touched the whole, think about all the people Ralph Cooper touched at the Apollo Theater right. for 40 or 50, 60 right. years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, what I, uh, I did well, learn a little I bit about you is bit that in your earlier years, early 10 years old, years old, you went door to door selling jet, jet magazines, magazines, Ebony and the Informer. Yes, I, uh, I was, I can, I can, uh, the forward times is now 60 years old. Mm -hmm. I can say that I was one of the first uh, paper boys of the forward times newspaper. I was, I had already been selling jet magazine. They had a, they had a thing when you, if you, if you read Jet Magazine back in the day, they had a little thing in there. If you wrote them a letter, they would let sell their newspapers. You could, I mean, their magazine. So I wrote them, I wrote a, a letter to them and I started selling Jets and Ebony's. And then I ventured out and started selling the Informer newspaper. And then I ventured out and started selling the Informer newspaper. And then we had three newspapers in Houston, daily newspapers in Houston at one time. And that was the, uh, everybody knows about the Houston Post and the Houston Chronicle, but that was the Houston Press. It was more like a crime newspaper. They did more crime, but the blacks, black people really thrived on it because they love to read about crime. And, uh, and I, hey man, crime and sports. So 
hey, I, I, I had all these routes going on. And the thing about it, I, I did my routes. I walked my routes. I never, so I was telling somebody this the other day, why would you walk? I said, I enjoyed walking. I had a, a sack, a bag or whatever with my newspapers in it. Uh -huh. And I would uh, uh, walk from door to door. And it, it inspired other people. Just like anything, when you do something real good, other people are going to copy you. So the other little boys in my neighborhood, like me, started selling the newspaper, the forward times, and the informers. So, so what I did, the papers came out on Wednesday. So you've been being innovative. I got sick every Wednesday. But I get a so some gave something and leave school early, and I had the <laughs> newspaper the distributor to drop my papers at my house in my house early, and I would just hit my regular customers uh, real quick. And by five o'clock, I had sold over 100, 100 papers on every Wednesday by, by five o'clock. And it was a lot of money back then. Right. Uh, candy bars right. were a nickel. Soda was a nickel. Hamburger was 25 cents. So imagine you got $5 in your pocket <laughs> and for two or three hours of work. You, you ain't pretty good. Absolutely. So you were sick. Absolutely. Look, uh, look. So you were sick <laughs> at school. And you okay. can see the, the other thing. This is for the educators, they, they need to know this. One of the things that inspired me also was the, the at school, in the library of starting in the seventh grade, especially mm -hmm. at uh, Christmas Addicts and Worthing High School, uh, they had the Pittsburgh Courier newspaper. They had the New York Amsterdam. They had the Chicago Defender. Plus, they had the local papers. But you could go to the library and read up the stuff that you had never imagined was happening in other places like Chicago, New right. York, and right. those type of places. So those those, those new those, and these were black newspapers writing about black people, and uh, they it was very inspirational. Absolutely, I'm Absolutely. glad you mentioned, mentioned that. I brought you on today because of the fact in February, February we always we say always Black History Month. Black this year, right. I this want to dedicate year, Black History Black Year, so Black History Black 365 history. days a year, because that's really what we do. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> Many of us, have, some of us have been on that. Black History every day. Absolutely, See, I mean, yeah, I have. I, I, can't, I can't do enough uh, of you, you, you are about to do because see we our history is one you can't tell in a in a, in a one week or one day type thing every absolutely. day we're making absolutely. history absolutely just absolutely. think about it yesterday uh sad to say was the a year uh, uh from kobe bryant and his daughter and some other people losing their life in a helicopter right and that was uh, a year right. ago yesterday so i mean history then then you lose hank aaron last week right uh right. so and then i i and, I, and see, and then you have to be open-minded. I used to stay up late at night after I found this person. I stay up late at night, or either where I was going, being single, I would get around. I make it a point to leave where I was leaving late in the in the morning or early in the morning, like one, two, three o'clock in the morning. And I did that to hear Larry King. Larry King was on the radio. See, many of you all just know Larry King for being on television, CNN. But I remember he was on the radio, and I would listen to his programs. And the thing why I listened was how he interviewed people, mm -hmm. and he would and 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 the style that he had in and really letting the people talk. When you interview him, ask him a kind of short question, blah blah, just let them talk. And then this was late night radio. Imagine you riding around two or three, four o'clock in the morning, and some people, why are you leaving my house? Why? You and they didn't know you were educating yourself. You were going to class, but get up, drive, and it was in. Enjoyable to ride around and listen to a person like that. So he dies at 87. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I learned a lot from Larry King, too. So, and mine is kind of, I try right. to let people right. talk. <laughs> right, right, right. And you're doing a, you do a great job. <laughs> so, part of that, in looking at, that, back looking at back at your long your legacy, long what would you tell people that you've learned you along the way? I've, I've learned um, that many, I've learned what many people, when they've been around great people, they don't really get a chance to. They just see the uh, okay. Many people they, they were around Muhammad Ali. They just they see the I'm the I'm the greatest. I'm the I'm the prettiest. Blah blah blah. They see that type of thing, or they see uh, a 
somebody saying that they're going to do this or that, but they don't really get to know the person that many of these people are no different than they are. They just happen to be blessed uh, being able to do what they did in regards to being great athletes, coming into a lot of money, but many of them were givers. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that surprised me, how many of these guys would give to different people, not just family. I'm talking about maybe people they grew up with, of course, if immediate family, mother, father, sister, brother, blah, 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 cousin, but then they would help, they would reach back and, and do other things for other people. They didn't have the monies that, say, LeBron and, and Michael Jordan have today, but hey, but look at what they're doing. Look at Michael Jordan, he recently gave, after all these years, Michael Jordan gave, uh, gave what? got involved with Black Lives Matter. Then you got LeBron James doing the thing with the school. Jalen Rose doing the thing with the school. So you see all of these guys, but you go back and you read up Sugar Ray Robinson and Joe Lewis. They were, uh, Jackie Robinson, they were trying to help other people. They just didn't have the kind of monies that these individuals have today uh, to change things. And I know some people, look, one thing I learned, hey, it's their money. Now you can, they can come to you, you can give them some ideas or they can come to you for some ideas, but the bottom line is still their money in regards to what they want to do with it. Uh, but you can't put the ideas into, uh, in between their ears. Absolutely. I love, like I said I earlier, like I love the way you highlight blacks in sports like right now. There's an right issue now. with uh, coaches. Uh, that's been a big thing. Uh, we don't have as many black coaches as coaches. many people feel yes. as we should. And we, Houston is interviewing for coaches, or was. was. And they did not, they and interviewed they first not, for a, uh, first I understand, for a, uh, for a quarterback versus for a, quarterback for a black coach. So what would you think so as far as that? Well, black coaches. I, I black lost, coaches. okay, my, my thing on, my, the, the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule was put into place uh, to help uh, blacks in regards to becoming head coaches in the NFL. The Rooney Rule, in my opinion, is a joke. The Rooney Rule is a joke. And uh, and, and and this is it's apparent right now. You had six or seven head coaching positions open. You had one slum to get hired, and all of the others uh, that have been hired so far have been white males. Now, the Houston Texans... Uh, decided to bring in a crew. They had Tony Dungy. They, they had Andre Johnson. Uh, they hired a PR group or whatever, so a consultant group to help them look for a coach. And a general manager, they told Deshaun Watson he was going to be in on the process, which was a lie. They lied to him. And now, uh, after getting a nice, juicy contract from them and, and praising them for the contract, he's turned, he's turned because of the fact that they lied to him about the hiring hiring of the uh, general manager. Mm -hmm. He found out just like the rest of us did. Now, he, he would like to be traded. Uh, and I don't blame him. You've been through two or three general managers here, two coaches, maybe a third when you're about to go through a third coach if you stay here. And but in Jeff type operation, you've got a three stooges type operation running the program. It's amazing how Cal McNair, uh, who, who, uh, whose father put him in this position where he becomes the CEO of the team and you stay there for 10, 15, 20 years and you run the program like you, you just, uh, you don't know anything about it. You, and then you lose the trust of your quarterback. It's huge in my opinion. And now you try to bring in different black guys to interview them. Absolutely, absolutely. And then in other sports, uh, one question a lot of people have asked, why sports for you instead of anything else in journalism? Why was sports a topic? That's a fact. Mm -hmm. I hope I made sense. I didn't hear you. Can okay. You see me? Yeah, I can see you. Uh-huh. Okay. Did you hear me? When I, I was asking you, what... you for, I lost you for a minute. Oh, okay. That. Yeah. So the question was, why sports? Why did I you hear. decide on sports instead of anything other than in journalism? Did you hear me? I don't know. All righty. Did can you hear yes, me? Yes, I did can you hear, hear you. Okay. The question was, why? Uh, why sports? Why did you decide on sports? versus anything else? Uh, 
try repeating that once more time. I'm going to try to see if I can hear you. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? All right. What we're going to do, let's take a break real quick. We're going to work on that. Uh, we'll be right back. The Cam Hill Show. We'll be right back to The Cam Hill Show after these messages. Light up your new year with a top-rated luxury SUV from Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 XT4 Luxury Collection for $319 a month, the new 2021 XT5 Luxury Collection for $399 a month, or the new 2021 XT6 Luxury Collection for $459 a month. All for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Amazing things for you. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, thanks so much for coming back. We're here with Ralph Cooper. Hey, my friend, we were just talking about why did you decide on sports? I think I'm old. Oh, yeah. Did you hear the question? Why did you, why did we decide on sports? All righty, seems like we're working on something. We're still working on it. Can't hear you. Okay. Can't hear it. You can't hear? Okay. We'll be working on that, guys. Work on that with him. Uh, but let's go over. I just want to reiterate that Ralph Cooper is the Texas Radio Hall of Fame 2020 recipient this year. That means, what that really means is that out of everyone that was uh, qualified, he was one of the recipients for 2020. And that's huge, huge, huge. He had been working at 1973 KYOK Radio. That's how he started, 1984, uh, KCOH to present. And a lot of that he always says, and I'm just reading a little bit about what he said, is that the Houston Forward Times is really a pivotal point in his, in his life. And a uh, shout out to Karen Carter Richards, who is over there taking the helm uh, from her parents. Uh, we appreciate you. I love her so much. She's a great person. COVID-19 impacted our newspapers. So we'll talk to Ralph about that and how that has affected the world now because it's a little different. Also, we'll be talking to him about the fact as far as radio in itself and how it has changed. We have a lot of friends, and I have a lot of friends in, in uh, doing podcasts and radio specials and things like that. And man, I'm telling you, it is outstanding what everybody is doing. We'll talk to him a little bit about his advice, about uh, what he's not only learned along the way, but how has it really changed in radio? and we'll talk to him about that. But I've known Ralph for a long period of time and he truly, truly deserves uh, the Hall of Fame. And it's, uh, he, he's, he's deserved it a long time ago, but he is one of the best in blacks in sports or just sports in itself. He has uh, really helped me understand the sports and just uh, the back part of it, not just sports what we see on TV. So what we'll be doing on there is uh, on Friday, I will be having, just to give you a little bit while we're working on some things. So Friday, we'll have Dr. Letitia Plummer, okay? She is a Houston City Council member from 1230 to 130. We'll be talking to her about uh, what's happening in Houston now, what really is going on and what uh, happened is going to be, you know, going forward. What do they have as far as budgets and things like that? And that'll be Friday. 
We'll be talking to her. And from then on, we'll be having a lot of great people. Uh, February the 22nd, I know for sure I finally signified or signed on Miles J, our R&B, uh, one of the greats. I love him uh, as far as his music so much. And uh, we have a host of other people that will be uh, putting on. If you have anybody that you're interested in, please uh, DM me. Please send the information to myself or my executive producer. Shout out to her, Diana Patterson. She is doing an excellent job. My creative director, uh, who we call T, she's doing excellent too. Look at my website. Please do. TheCamHillShow.com. Go to it. Sign up. Uh, send me information. Let me know that you like it or you don't. YouTube, if you want to see all of my past guests. I have over 140 uh, videos of all past guests. Look at that on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Please do. I need that. Also, go to my Facebook page. Please, at any time, like it. Uh, I have a lot of things that's on there, a lot of controversial things. Don't, don't hold me to it. Just <laughs> if you like it, that's okay. Instagram, be a follower of mine, please. We've had a lot of, play, a lot of great people on there, but do that at any time, and I'd appreciate that so much. But my YouTube, website, uh, Instagram, and they just put me on Twitter, so I don't know how to tweet yet. I'm going to tweet a little bit, but I don't know how. It goes real fast, so I'm going to work on that. So it's all under the Cam Hill Show. I'm working on this. We're trying to give you the best. If you have any people you want on the show and you want to see them, let me know about them. I'll do that. On Fridays, we're going to start doing giveaways. So coming this Friday, we're going to give, I know we have a gift certificate right now, $25 gift certificate to Grace's uh, restaurant. We'll be giving that away. We're going to have $25 gift. We're going to have gift cards. And on some of those days, I'll have TVs. I'll have all kind of things. So that'll be every single Friday starting this Friday. I'll be doing that. Give me, give me other things that you'd like to do and let me know of any time that you would love to do those things. Let's do this. We're going to take another break and we'll be right back. Be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. Light up your new year with a top rated luxury SUV from Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 XT4 Luxury Collection for $319 a month, the new 2021 XT5 Luxury Collection for $399 a month, or the new 2021 XT6 Luxury Collection for $459 a month. All for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Amazing things for you. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate it so much. We want to thank Mr. Ralph Cooper for coming on. I want to reiterate, he is the Texas Radio Hall of Fame 2020, and he truly, truly deserves it. I appreciate my friend for coming back on. Uh, in doing so, I just want to reiterate again that on Friday, I will be having uh, Dr. Letitia, Dr. Letitia Plummer. In doing so, she will be 12.30 to 1.30 Central Standard Time. Mr. Ralph, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, just wanted okay. to thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you're doing. Tell the people, the viewers, your last words. Well, my, my last words is uh, I'll, I'll come in. I'm going to come in and do your show with you in person. Mask on or whatever, hoodie, 
mask on, whatever. I want to come in and do a program with you because I really enjoy you. And, wanted, uh, and I think we, uh, I think I owe the people a little bit more. So, and I really appreciate you uh, and what you're doing. That's part of my closing words. But the other thing I want to share with you and others uh, who are planning on doing this, you have to outwork other people. You want my thing was also that I didn't share earlier was to outwork everybody. I didn't care if they were black, white, blue, or green. Uh, I used to get up in the middle of the night to get in interviews. Go out to the airport in the middle of the night, go to wherever it was, a church or whatever, to get an interview in the middle of the night. And uh, it, so if you want to really do this and you really want to uh, be good at what you do, uh, like I said earlier, the time, forget about the time, and then just put the emphasis on doing the job and being very professional about what you do. And also, and also again, knowing more than what you're, you have to, if you're going to inform people, you know more than what they know. You've got to give them something that they don't already know. So uh, that's, that's, that's my parting shots. And again, uh, invite me into the program. I want to come there and sit with you. I, I, I like the, the way you have your name behind your head there. <laughs> it's a cam here. Oh, my Think about it. I, the love, cam it. I love it. Your, your, your mother's still, your mother's still living? Yes. yes. Your mother's still living? Yes, she is. And and see, I say that because, see, when I was, my mother died a couple of years ago. My mother listened to every everything. My mother watched me for 20 years on Channel 13. My mother listened to all of my radio programs, and my mother was my greatest fan. Many times I get a call from her just before I went on the air. Not, not talking about the program, just talking. Right. So your mother, I don't know your mother's name, but I'll let you say it, but your mother, see, behind your big, shiny, nice <laughs> head there, your mother sees the name. Cam Hill, the Cam Hill Show. <laughs> Think about that. The Cam Hill, you've got your own show. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Invite me friend. where I can come into the state. And and, and tell every uh, for those again, it's uh Star TV, right? Yeah, A Star. Yes. Yeah, yes. A Star TV. Star TV. Okay. With, your, with your friend a million yeah. right being the VP, yeah. Vice President. Right. Hey, 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 he he's a man that has been among the stars. Cleveland, Ohio. There you go. And uh, he's a hero to many people back in Cleveland. Some don't want him back. Many, many <laughs> welcome him. Some don't want that. With you. So hey, man, again, I want to thank you. I, I you know, and and and, and ask Emilio sometime to tell you about the dog pound. Okay. I didn't really understand okay. what the dog pound was in Cleveland until um, my wife is from Cleveland, and her father and when they were kids, they would go out and sit in the dog pound and sit in the stadium and watch the Cleveland Browns. They would take blankets to. Game. Mm -hmm. Even when they got older, they were still going out to these games watching the Cleveland Browns play football in the snow and ice yes. off of the lake. Yes. And I'm um, say, man, and again, keep up the great work, Cam. I appreciate I you, you. Dr. Sloan. Thank you, thank you, thank okay. you, my friend, for thank everything, you, and congratulations The Cam to Hill you. Show. <laughs> the Cam Hill Show. I want you to do that, too. I'm going to call you back and do a snippet. Talk to you soon. Thanks, buddy. Okay, thank bye bye you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Like I said, on Friday, we will have Dr. Letitia Plummer, who is our Houston City Council member, 1231 to 30. See you then. Bye.